All right, Shalom. I'm going to start off with giving all praise, honor, and glory to you. How about you? Yahweh Shai. Double on the city of apostles. You know, it's a great millstone. Peace of sight. Taste of the hopeful elect. Coming at you with another lesson to the spirit and power of you. How about you? Yahweh Shai. Just doing a quick hit through the spirit. As I've seen the elder, the beloved elder, Manatha Zakba, down in South Carolina. Do a repost, all right, on a video, um, on a camp video that was, uh, that he re-uploaded um, when me and our brother Danyala from GM, GMS Pittsburgh went down there, you know, was was able, okay, was able through the through the grace and mercy of Yahweh Shemel Shada, be able to go down there and uh, be with the brothers down there and teach, all right? And we had these individuals come up and now we're going over, you know, uh, they mentioned the book of Enoch, right? Which that book is a false book and we do not deal with the book of Enoch, all right? We stick with the Holy Scriptures, all right? Matter of fact, let's get this. Let's get this first. I'm already in Isaiah 34. Cool, cool. That's where I wanted to go. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. It says, "Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it have commanded, and His Spirit it have gathered them." Right. So, the book we are supposed to seek ye out of. We are supposed to seek. Yahweh, right? Why Yahweh Shai? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai was supposed to seek. He had the book of the Lord, which is the Holy Scriptures alone, and read. Okay, that's it. We don't deal with no other book. We are seeking out of the book of the Lord for the true understanding, the true living waters. The Holy Spirit cometh out of what? The Holy Scriptures. Okay? <clears throat> As the Scripture says, um, the words, words. I speak. The book of John chapter 6 verse 63 it says, It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profit of nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now we know Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai being, okay, as the word made flesh. Okay? So the word, okay, what is spoken, the scriptures. See, these are th these words are life. You see, that's why we're to continue to dive into these scriptures. This is how you, also another way of knowing how you make clean, right? Through the word. You see, let's get that real fast. And the spirit is kind of switching towards I, what I really wanted to uh, touch on, but it's okay though, as long as it's as long as the scripture, as long as this lesson is edifying, Lord willing. Okay, John chapter 15, verse 3, it says, And I'll start at verse 1, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through what? Through the word which I have spoken unto you. You see? The true living waters, the true a cleanser the true a healer okay which is this word come also what what else comfort comfort comes uh, uh through this word you see let's get a uh, what is that psalms 1 19 verse 50 it says and this is king uh king david it says Let's, let's start at verse 48. It says, my hands also. Ooh, let's start at verse 40. Goodness. Let's start at verse 42. It says, so shall I have wherewith to answer that. Answer him that reproaches me. For I trust in thy word. And take, if, and take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For I have hoped in thy judgments. So shall I keep. Thy law continually forever and ever, and I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. Where can these precepts be found? In the Holy Scriptures. I will speak of thy testimonies all also before kings and will not be ashamed. I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. Where are them commandments found? In the Holy Scriptures. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I loved. I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort and my affliction. 
for thy word. Okay, what? This is my comfort and my affliction. Thy, for thy word have quickened me. Read it in the NIV. My comfort and my suffering is this. Your promise preserves my life. Right here is the faith and the patience of the saints. Okay, so as we are ahead of, as we are comforted by the hope, as the scripture says, we are prisoners of hope. As we are being patient and having faith of the promises that the Lord has said that that will be given unto us. You see, so, you know, if we're, we're, if we're the hopeful uh, elect, you know, of, of Salaka, if we we are the hopeful elect now, but if we are of the elect, the scriptures talk about the promises that's going to happen to us, all Israel, you know, you know, as the scripture says, all Israel should be saved. You see, so we're waiting on uh, uh, salvation, kingdom, righteousness, right? Glory. The, see, these are different things that we have a, a faith and patience in. You know, but this is this is a comfort that what there's going to be no more affliction. There's going to be no more hell. There's going to be no more reproach. There's going to be no more uh, shame. No more uh, a curse. No more sickness. You know, all, all these different things. You know, stress, anxiety, pain, hurt. These different things that you know we're going through. You know, these these sickly bodies. You know, polluted having a, a, a polluted mindset, having to fight. You know, uh, fight with the war in your mind. You know, the, 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 the spirit and the flesh, all, all these different things, you see, that will be no more. Okay, but what gives us that comfort? What gives us the hope? What, what book? Because it still goes back to what book am I speaking of? The Holy Scriptures. Okay, not your one or mate. The, the Bible doesn't need another book to stand firm with it. Now we do use other books. Okay. We do use other books that, you know, we, we, we bring out. Okay, and say, see, look, even this book says that, even that book says that, because it's, 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 you know, it's aligning with the scriptures, you know. But other than that, the the book, the Bible stands alone, firm on its own, firm alone, you know. So like it kind kind of went off topic a little bit. So when we're dealing with this, um, and actually the spirit had me go because this is the comment I wanted to deal with. It says from Terry Godfrey. It says telling lies Satan and, and a third of the angels Was cast out of heaven for rebellion Against the most high Written in the King James 1611 version What book do you think We're reading out of right now Scripture says seek ye out of the book Of the Lord and read Okay so what other book will we be using None we're using the King James version 1611 This is what you see us, All of us brothers up there reading out of What, what are you talking about Okay, that is a fable. What, what you're what you're talking about is a complete fable, and it's a lie that we have, you know, uh, uh, broken down through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bash and Yahweh Shai. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter one, verse four says, "Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions, rather than godly edifying, which is in faith." Okay, so you're giving heed to something that is fable, the book of Enoch. The book of, uh, 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 what is it called? I think it's the book of Asher. And it's just all these different books, okay, that are tainted today. The book of Enoch does not line up with the Holy Scriptures. If there was a book of Enoch, right, and, you know, the book will, the book of Enoch will line exactly up with the Bible says. It will not contradict itself. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying that there, there may not be a book of Enoch, but I'm letting you know the book of Enoch that's being spread, the, the doctrine of the book of Enoch that's being spread around the earth today, as we see, is BS. It's BS. When it talks about, you know, these different things, false doctrines like that, of you know, angels rebelling against the Lord, that's off, man. You see? So we don't deal with different uh, books and doctrines that teach garbage like this. Okay? As it says in 2 Peter to the 1 verse 16, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now beforehand, let's just say before we came into the truth, when we was in a Gentile state of mind, we were, you know, some brothers and sisters were following cunningly devised fables. Okay? 
that E have came up with or that E have adopted from different uh, cultures before and, and mingled it all together and then came up with his own version. All these different things, yes. But of now, of, uh, of now and of knowing the truth, okay, uh, as being uh, taught again, as being born again, we now we know the truth. You see, and we don't follow cunning devised fables. And that's what that is. You see? First Timothy chapter 4 verse 7, but refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 4, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Let's go get, let's pull this up real quick. Fable. What is it? Falsehood, fictitious narrative, a lie. Right? Something that is unreal. Something that is invented. You see? And here you have it. So when you when you have when you say things like this, you are absolutely wrong. Let's see what the elder put down. Prove it. Boom. Prove all things. First Timothy, first Thessalonians to the five, verse 21. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. As the elder says, if that were true, you would have posted the scripture. But reposted it again. First Thessalonians to the five verse twenty-one. Prove all things. Hold fast. Hold fast that which is good. Here we go. Uh, okay. Cool. Cool. Uh oh. Uh oh. Here we go. Here we go. Revelation twelve verse seven through seventeen. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And in the dragon and the dragon fought against his, fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with them. No, this war of heaven is talk about, you know, Yahweh Shai and the holy angels fighting against Esau. Okay, fighting against Esau and his whole military. Right? That's what this is going into. This war in heaven is going into... How was shy and the holy angels fighting against whom? E in his military power. Okay? His jets, his planes, and all his BS that he had, he has. That's why he is going to be cast out. He is going to be taken down. You see? This old devil. This is talking about he saw Edom, man. This is not talking about, you know, no actual dragon. You know? So it's like, explain where the demons come from, like the ones in the men that answer and said, it's the name of Legion because he has so many demons that was cast out by Christ and nearby pigs. Well, what, 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 okay, you're talking about spirits. Like, what, what are you talking about, man? You know, but see, these people, these guys actually probably think that, you know, there's a, a you know, the spiritual demon Satan is actually, uh, you know, some type of dragon entity or red with a pitchfork. And, and that's what I, I, you know, I believe or I'm perceiving they're talking about for them to even post Revelation chapter 12 or 7. This is what I'm getting from it. For them to put their scripture when it talks about the dragon. They may think it's an actual dragon. Okay? So now I'm about to post on the comment board. So wait a minute. Is Satan a dragon? I I'm trying to figure out why you posted the scripture. You see? But see, this is what happens when you lack of understanding. This is what happens when you don't want, you don't want to be uh, taught again. You see? So uh, let's just get this real quick, and I'll, I'll, I'll close it after that. I ain't, you know, I ain't mean to make this too long. Close it after that. Let's go to the book of, uh, matter of fact, let's, it's the book of Psalms, chapter 103. Let's, let's, let's kill this, this madness. The book of Psalms, chapter 103, verse 20. It says, bless, <coughs> let's start at verse 19. Yahweh have prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless Yahweh, ye his angels that excel in his strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Let's read that in the NIV, verse 20. Praise Yahweh, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding. 
who obey his word. So there you go. There you have it that the angels do the bidding of the Lord and they obey his word. They are not disobedient unto his word. Okay? But Lord willing, I'm going to come back with another lesson to the Spirit of Yahweh Hashem on Shai to touch on this a little bit more and bring out a few more precepts just to solidify, okay, this, this crap, this argument that these people come up with of Satan, the angels rebelling, rebelling against the Lord. So until next time, I want to say Shalom.